is um, the first few pages of a short story I've been working on, entitled The Whale Princess. Like most parents-to-be, Rachel said, I don't care, as long as it's healthy. In response to friends, family, friends, and strangers when they asked whether she wanted a boy or a girl. Like many parents, she secretly preferred one over the other. In this case, a girl. Like almost all parents, by healthy she meant, please God, don't let her have autism or cerebral palsy or a weird-shaped head. And please, please, don't let her be a whale baby. In the past 10 years, babies altered by fetal citizen syndrome accounted for almost 7% of all births. The first such birth happened a little more than 20 years ago by a poor Mexican immigrant on, at her home on the south shore of Long Island. The family was horrified at the sight of little Eduardo, the father most of all. He did the natural human thing and tried to throw Eduardo in the garbage. Eduardo was saved by the love of his mother, who demanded that she and her newborn be taken to the hospital despite the risk and expense. To the hospital emergency room they went and were met with the same confusion and disgust by the doctors and nurses. The doctors and nurses rushed her into a room and took Eduardo away from her for tests. Eduardo's mother didn't know it would be the last time she would see her son for 15 years. Upon examination, Eduardo seemed completely healthy. His breathing was normal, but he was taking air through a blowhole on the back of his stumpy neck. His skin was blue-gray and a little rubbery, but not oversensitive to the touch. His pupils dilated under the glare of a flashlight. His stubby, flipper-like arms had only two fingers and a thumb at the end, but he grasped the doctor's pointer finger reflexively. The doctors feared an epidemic. Something in the water, something in the air, something in the blood had twisted little Eduardo into a monster. They called the CDC, and were not believed until they called several times. The CDC called their friends at the FBI, who called the president, who called the secretary of defense, who said, God damn it, send in a biohazard squad, wipe the memories of the people who were in the waiting room, and snatch that little Mexican up for a round of experiments. And so, that was what was done. The people in the waiting room were wiped, as were the doctors and nurses, once they were interrogated. Eduardo's mother and extended family were interrogated more roughly, but their memories could not be wiped. They were too attached to the boy. They were released and told never to speak of the incident on threat of deportation. Eduardo's mother wailed all the way home and thought of her son every night before she went to sleep. The people in the waiting room would sometimes dream of Edu Eduardo's cry, a human squall rising into an ancient marine howl. Rachel had read about Eduardo. Everyone had. He was on the front cover of Time and the top story on the internet. He was nearly a man now, almost seven feet tall and as comfortable on land as in water. He was the lead advocate for human citizen rights. He was posed next to his mother in a number of articles. In the photographs, she smiled and had both hands wrapped around Eduardo's elbow as if to say, Look at my big, strong son. Look at how special he is. And I am his mother. Rachel thought the whole thing was a freak parade. She kept the thought to herself when anyone asked her about the Cetacean rights movement. Yes, she'd heard about the atrocities, about how the transition from human to whale baby happened in the last month of pregnancy, and unprepared parents committed infanticide at terribly high rates. Cetaceans had trouble in school, were beaten and murdered more than their share in the population would indicate. It was supposed to be especially tragic since almost all Cetaceans were still children. It wasn't that Rachel didn't care. She just felt like it was another cause demanding her attention, like homelessness, saving the rainforest, or walking for breast cancer. <laughs> she had a busy life, especially now that she was going to be a mommy. There was so much laundry to do and so many books to read about baby names and so many doctor's appointments to keep that she could hardly be expected to keep up with the latest minority struggle. When she saw pamphlets entitled, your whale baby and you, at the doctor's office. She cringed and looked away. When Dr. Lyons asked her in her ninth month if she wanted to have an ultrasound to see if her daughter, yes, a girl, had fetal citizen syndrome, she refused. She knew Tara would be healthy. She just knew it. 
A month later, she felt like the victim of an especially cruel joke when Tara's smooth, rubbery head crowned and her husband, Jeff, fainted. Thank <laughs> you.